Catch a ride on your favorite warp star and join the Pink Puff on his colorful quest. Let's fly into the fact pit with Kirby's Adventure for the NES. As Kirby's first game in color, the developers at HAL had a hard time deciding what color to make him. Some developers, like Shigeru Miyamoto, wanted to make him yellow, citing characters like Pac-Man and Nubo. But they eventually decided to make him pink to match the advertisements for the original Game Boy game. Kirby's Adventure came out fairly late in the console's life, and it's the single largest officially licensed NES game, coming in at 6 megabits. Only one other official game is bigger than that, and it only came out for the Famicom. It's called Metal Slater Glory, and it was also made by HAL. There's a hidden room in Stage 1-1 where you can get a UFO power-up, the earliest one in the game. If you take the first letters of each of the level names and reverse them, it spells Roiji Biv, which is a common mnemonic device for remembering the colors of the rainbow spectrum. The colors also match the borders of each level's opening cinematic. If you hit the select button to drop your power on the exact same frame you take damage from an enemy, you'll be able to keep the same power until you die. You could even use this to take UFO out of the levels. The boss rush tower in stage 7-2 has an alternate entrance with much harder bosses. But if you get through it, you'll receive 5 extra lives as a reward. The mix ability isn't actually random. Whenever you use mix, it cycles through the abilities in a set order. Backdrop, throw, UFO, fire, spark, cutter, sword, fireball, laser, mic, wheel, hammer, parasol, sleep, needle, ice, freeze, high jump, beam, stone, ball, tornado, crash, and light. Then it repeats. Inhaling different enemies simply changes your starting point in the sequence. So by inhaling two Rockies, for example, if you let the mix end on its own, you will always end up on a UFO power-up. If you complete the goal games in order seven times in a row, starting at seven and ending at one, you will be rewarded with 30 extra lives. As you approach the Warp Star in 1-2, try this. Fly just above Sir Kibble until the Warp Star is barely off-screen. When he throws the blade, fly to the right and the star will disappear because there are too many sprites on screen. Continue to the right and you'll be able to see a hidden room with blocks that spell out HAL. With Emulator Overscan, you can see a door at the top of the screen that's inaccessible. These doors are actually all over the game, because they mark the point where the Warp Star transfers to the next area. But they're usually hidden in such a way that you can't see them. When facing Paint Roller, get him down to half health, then wait for him to draw a mic enemy. Inhale it, then use the power against him. Make sure to be floating in this exact spot when you use the third one. If done correctly, you'll grab the Star Rot piece just as he dies, but the game won't take away your mic power. You can now use it 255 more times, as opposed to just three, which also causes a few graphical errors. Just be careful not to get hit, or you'll lose it as normal. Now why not test out your newfound knowledge and save Dreamland in one of the biggest adventures the NES has to offer? Hey, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and comment below to tell me what other games you'd like to see on the Fact Pit.